Hey guys, it's me, Freddy Pop Collector, and welcome to another useless FNAF Facts video. The last one I did was back in May, and since then I've gotten a lot of requests to do a part 4. Over the course of May and a little bit of June, I've just been slowly gathering facts. And now that I have 20, here are the final 20 useless FNAF Facts. The first fact kicking off the final useless FNAF facts video is that Molten Freddy's eye color between Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator and Ultimate Custom Night actually changes. In Molten Freddy's debut game FNAF 6, his eye color was red, but for some reason when Ultimate Custom Night rolled around, his eye color was changed to yellow. This is something I actually didn't notice for years until actually a few weeks ago. FNAF 3 was actually the first game in the entire series to have an extras menu. Since FNAF 3 didn't have a custom night, Scott decided to add an extras menu where you could see the animatronics, activate cheats, things like that. On the extras menu, every single character that appeared in the game appears in the extras menu, except for one. It's odd because Phantom Mangle is the only phantom that's cut from the extras menu. Every single phantom, Phantom BB, Puppet, Freddy, Foxy, Chica, they're all here but Mangle isn't. It gets even more weird when you realize that there's enough slots, there's seven for the six phantoms in Springtrap, but for some reason Springtrap gets two. Personally, I don't find the mediocre melodies all that interesting. It's nothing against them, I just don't really find them interesting. However, there is one easter egg that I find pretty interesting, and that's the fact that they have FNAF 1 endoskeletons. You can mostly tell in the jump scares in Ultimate Custom Knife. For a brief second, you can see the endoskeleton's teeth, and they match identically to the FNAF 1 endoskeletons. As we all know, in FNAF VR, there's a huge showtime button in the game that does absolutely nothing. Interestingly though, there's a button way out of bounds of the hub world that is called End Showtime. Since the showtime song is in the files and the button was pushed out of bounds and not deleted, I'm pretty sure that this was a last minute decision to cut showtime. As we all know, in FNAF 2 and FNAF Ultimate Custom Night, we never see the full body of JJ. Since we never see anything besides JJ's face, it makes sense that JJ has no arms or legs. It makes sense because it would just be a waste of time to model those if no one would see him, but it's pretty funny to see just this floating head and body in the files. I don't know if JJ had a full body in FNAF 2, but it's 100% that in Ultimate Custom Night she didn't, and I think that's pretty funny. Withered Bonnie, I think, is one of the most interesting animatronics in the entire series. He's the only one missing a face and an entire arm, and this alone makes him stand out from the rest. We've never actually seen Withered Bonnie's face before, though, and I've always wondered if it had whiskers or not. I think you can figure it out, though. If you take the Nightmare Bonnie and Withered Bonnie, there's actually a lot of similarities, like the withering on their left hand and right foot. Also, the fact that the Withered animatronics and Nightmare animatronics don't have any elbow pads or knee pads. Because of the similarities, I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that Withered Bonnie probably did have whiskers. In the last video, I brought up the coffee pot easter egg that can sometimes spawn in FNAF VR's FNAF 3 remakes. But apparently it can spawn somewhere else in the game. If you go to the prize corner, on very rare occasions, the coffee pot easter egg will be sitting on the floor. This really reminds me of the helpy one. There's no way to make it appear, it just spawns sometimes. I don't know if I like this one as better as the FNAF 3 one because it's more hidden, but it's still a pretty cool easter egg. As we all know, eye color is somewhat important in the FNAF lore, whether you're talking about Baby or whoever. Every single FNAF character seems to have a staple eye color. Freddy's usually is blue, Chica's usually is pink, Bonnie's usually is purple, and Foxy's is usually yellow. However, only one of these characters keeps their primary eye color throughout every single iteration of animatronic, and that is Foxy. All of the Freddy's have blue eyes except for Nightmare Freddy who has orange. The Bonnie's are honestly all over the place. Rockstar and Toy have green, and then the regular Bonnie has purple. Withered Bonnie has red, so they're they're just all over the place, really. Chica, Withered Chica, and Funtime Chica have pink slash purple eyes, but Toy Chica has blue, so that breaks the chain there. But every single iteration of Foxy and FNAF has yellow slash orange eyes. FNAF 1 Foxy, Mangle, Withered Foxy, Funtime Foxy, Nightmare Foxy, Rockstar Foxy, you name it. By the way, I just got done editing this video and realized that the phantoms all have gray eyes. No, I don't count the phantoms, guys. Just, just forget they ever existed. Just don't. On the subject of Foxy animatronics, I noticed something really weird about Mangle in Ultimate Custom Night. For some reason, in her jump scare, you can't see her endoskeleton teeth, but in FNAF 2, you can. I don't really know why this would be the case. Maybe he lost Mangle's model somehow and had to redo the head or something. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think about this in the comments. I noticed this, and I just thought it was really strange. I looked at other characters in Ultimate Custom Night and their jump scares. Every other character seems to be normal, so I don't really know what's going on here. Tell me in the comments if you guys notice anything else strange like this. 
In the entire series, Nightmare Chica is the only animatronic with three sets of teeth. Yep, that's it. That's the entire fact. Every other animatronic has two or one. Jacko Chica is the only one with two. I meant three. Whatever. F This next one I find pretty interesting. I don't see that many people talking about this, and that's the fact that Security Breach may be VR compatible. If it is VR compatible, I'm definitely playing it in VR. Maybe I'll play it both ways, I don't know yet. I found a video that does a pretty good job of explaining it. I'll leave it in the description below if you want to find out more about this. Also, tell me in the comments if you guys are going to play it in VR or non-VR. I'm really curious to see. I think I'm going to play it VR for my first time and then non-VR for my second. I just really like VR games, and I think FNAF VR was really good, and I'm really excited for Security Breach as well. I don't know if this next one is intentional or not on Scott's part, but in Ultimate Custom Night, we can actually pinpoint when each character was programmed into the game. It's pretty funny because Golden Freddy was actually the very first character programmed into the game. If you take this from a lore perspective, it actually makes a lot of sense, and just a cool easter egg, I thought. I don't know about you guys, but I've really enjoyed these Fazbear Fright books we've been getting here recently. Between updates and games like AR and big news like Security Breach, it's nice to get these little books that you can just read f just for fun. I'm currently reading the third book, which was 1.35am. I really enjoyed the first two stories, the one with Ella and the Minarinas. I'm moving on to the third one now. I'm kind of getting off topic here. All I'm going to say is if you see these in a store and you haven't checked them out, I highly recommend you do so. They're really good. I honestly prefer them more than the actual Silver Eyes trilogy. Originally, there were only going to be five books confirmed by the Steam post by Scott in the mega thread back in like, what, 2018? Recently though, we got the announcement that two more books were coming, book 6 and 7. I'm really excited that we're getting more of these, hopefully we can get at least 10. Personally, I'm really enjoying these Fazbear Fright books, and we'll see how many there are in a few years from now. There's 12 months in a year, and almost every single month has had a FNAF game release. The only three months of the year to not have a FNAF game release is February, April, and September. FNAF 1 was released in August, FNAF 2 November, FNAF 3 March, FNAF 4 July, Sister Location October, FNAF World January, FNAF 6 in December, FNAF VR in May, and FNAF AR in November. It's very possible we could be seeing a September release for Security Breach, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest, then that would leave just April and February with no FNAF game releases. As I'm sure we all know, Scott Cawthon isn't very proud of FNAF World. He tries to sweep it under the rug and pretend it never existed, but it did, and it's honestly one of my favorite games. I don't know why he doesn't like it. Although most fans have grown to appreciate it nowadays, back then it had a very mixed reaction, almost a negative one. There were a lot of bugs and glitches, and because of this, Scott decided to pull it from mobile devices entirely, and it hasn't returned since. A lot of people say that the first time we hear Springtrap talk is FNAF 6, but this actually isn't true. In FNAF 3, he mumbles one phrase that's actually kind of chilling. Some people may know about this, but this actually isn't something I found out until a few weeks ago. The phone call from FNAF 1 is actually in FNAF 4. It's replayed and the audio is a little bit switched up, but it's there. I doubt this has any lore significance. I'll play a clip from a video I'll leave in the description basically explaining it. Let's check it out. Sounds familiar. Recently, the FNAF Reddit reached 100k members. That's really impressive for an indie game like FNAF. Yep, that's it. It's a useless fact video, what'd you expect? Something I found quite interesting is that Nightmare Eon's voice from Ultimate Custom Night is actually the only one to return in FNAF VR. Characters like Foxy and Toy Freddy's voices returned in AR, but in VR's Nightmare Eon's was the only one kept for some reason. Iconic voices like Mangle, Nightmare Fredbear, Foxy, and Toy Freddy, which I've already mentioned, were cut, and I have no idea why they decided to keep Nightmare Eon's voice in. So here we are, the final useless FNAF fact I'll ever discuss on this channel. 80 facts later, we are finally at the end. The final useless FNAF fact of this entire series is... 
that there's a FNAF ride in development. Listen, I've been a FNAF fan for almost five years, and I did not hear about this FNAF ride basically until like three weeks ago. And if I didn't hear about it for that long, I'm sure as heck that there's at least some people out there who didn't know about this. I'm gonna give the basic details, but basically there's a FNAF ride in development. I'll put more details in the description below. Maybe I'll link a video. This ride has been under construction for a long time. It hasn't really even started building, I don't think. I don't know that much details on it, guys. I'm sorry. I'll link a video, I promise, with more details if you want to find out more. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and supporting the series. I hope those people who wanted a part 4 are satisfied. Please don't ask for a part 5. It's not coming. Maybe, maybe someday. It'll be at least a year before I continue this series back up, just because I'm honestly out of facts to give. I'm sorry I've been kind of slacking on uploads over the past two weeks. I've been going on vacations, hanging out with family, just kind of having a good time enjoying the summer. I hope you guys can understand. I'll be back to uploading normally, probably tomorrow, daily videos again. Also, I wanted to tell you guys, if you remember in this video, way back when, I think that was like, what, the end of April, I said that I was going to write Wither Chica 10,000 times if she wasn't the next character, and she wasn't, it was 8-Bit Baby. I don't want to be seen as a liar or a faker, so I'm going to write Wither Chica 10,000 times, I've already done it, and here you go. Alright guys, today's the day I'm going to write Wither Chica 10,000 times. Um, I don't know how long this is going to take, but let's just, let's just get started. All right, oh, I'm done. I wrote with her chica 10,000 times. Oh, that was hard. You guys would not believe how long that took me to write. It took like two weeks. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you're new. I have lots of videos coming down soon, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.